Welcome to Suite 105. I'm Melissa Krikorian, physical and somatic therapist and curious about the brain and human behavior. We experience ourselves and the world around us through our nervous system. A piece of music can stir sensations of joy or beauty, which we register in our body. Last week, we talked about where and how we store emotions in our body. There may be times when the same sensation elicits a different response. If you've ever been in a relationship, you know sometimes your friend, partner, or spouse will set your teeth on edge, and at other times you can just laugh and love them for who they are. What makes the difference? It's no surprise that it depends on your state of mind. In past vlogs, I've talked about the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. When these states were first recognized, the sympathetic nervous system was prioritized because they coded it as the state that was sympathetic to your survival. The sympathetic nervous system is on the lookout for safety, threat, food, friends. The other state of your nervous system was named in reference to the sympathetic nervous system. It was named after, called the parasympathetic nervous system. That sounds like it runs parallel to the sympathetic nervous system. But now we consider the two systems not parallel to one another, but on the same continuum that changes moment to moment. And we now understand that the extreme end of the parasympathetic nervous system is also a survival mode with its death fame behavior. When we can't fight, fly, or freeze, when all hope is gone for our defense, we play dead. Depression, checking out. Watch this common, but not commonly recognized example of the extreme parasympathetic state. He rifles it right in front of us to Abdul Rahman at midcourt, extra pass. And it goes for the win! The three-pointer, a freshman has won it for the Wolverines. We respond differently to the same stimulus in each state. The ball player on the gym floor might have been impressed and pleased with his rival's skill at making the basket, if it hadn't cost him the game. With the game over, he is left without the ability to defend himself, run away from the truth, or freeze and hope the score will change. His system does the only thing left in a life or death situation. He lays down and plays dead to the threat of his team's survival in the playoffs. There are many mechanisms that modulate the nervous system, but a key player in neuromodulation is the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve goes all over your body and has many important functions. We're going to talk about one of those. This is as detailed as I'm going to be, so track with me one more step. The vagus nerve has two branches, a branch that goes more towards the front or ventral and a branch that goes more towards the back or dorsal the ventral branch of the vagus nerve dampens the sympathetic nervous system. It's called the vagal break. It slows down the aggressive mode of the sympathetic nervous system. When monitored, it is more active during times of peace and calm, like resting or feeling at ease. If you can learn to modulate your vagus nerve, the vagal break, you can slow down the hypervigilant and often urgent neural environment of the sympathetic nervous system that sometimes makes you respond in haste and make mistakes. You could break your response, pause, take in all the information available to you, and make a clear conscious choice as to what is your next best option in a split second. You can see how this would be good for all sorts of reasons, including staying in a relationship, professional or personal. Too little vagal break and we blow up at the slightest aggression too much vagal break and we shut down. How would we measure such a thing? There is an index, a measurement of how active your vagus nerve is. It's called heart rate variability. Stephen Porges, a researcher who wrote the book, Polyvagal Theory, poly meaning many. So the many branches, actually only two, of the vagus nerve and their different and fascinating functions. Porges did years of research to come up with this index. It is based on the fact that our heart rate responds in a specific way to our respiration rate, our breathing. When we are in a modulated state, our heart rate increases with inhalation and decreases with exhalation. And the more difference, the more variability 
in the heart rate, the better. Think about it. If you're frightened, your heart races, whether you're breathing in or out. If you hold your breath, your heart rate doesn't change, no variance. This week, my colleague and fellow CFR practitioner, Cora, got to see her autonomic nervous system at work. She learned to modulate her vagus nerve through our work. Look at this chart. The flares are the activation of the ventral vagus nerve. It activates when she's at sleep and when she is resting in a special therapy blanket. But it also flares when she is doing a CFR lesson or a CFR self-adjustment tool, which also involves movement. The researcher was quite surprised to see that even though she was moving in the lesson and self-adjustment tool, her vagus nerve was active, calming her system. You could learn how to gain access to your vagus nerve too. We do it by retraining our brain using mindfulness and exploring novel, simple, but sophisticated movement sequences. There are several ways you can join in. And to find out more, go to nexuspt.net. I welcome you to subscribe below and leave comments so I can know what you'd like more of or less of or different. See you next week and think about joining us and learning how to modulate your vagus nerve.